Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington Tea Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And I've had a couple of requests, um, which I think are actually super good questions, which is, can you show me how to do a tick check for idiots? And you know what? I think that it's an important issue, and I don't think people are idiots if they don't know how to do this. I think that for a lot of people, it's just a random thing when they find a tick on their dog. So I thought today we'd give you a, the way that I look for ticks, because I have a furry dog, and if I had a black dog, I'd have to check even closer, um, because there has to be a way to do this so that you can actually find them. And if you're good at it and you do it enough, you can find them before they attach, and so that can minimize all kinds of health risks for your dog and expensive um, treatments with antibiotics. So we all find ticks on our dogs, but to have a really thorough way to look for them, I think is a really useful thing. So the first things you're gonna need to assemble are, oh, and I didn't even get mine. <laughs> um, and I can't put my Tristan off my lap. It's hard to get him back here. Uh, well, all right, well, I have some Tea Pro spray. This is tea tree oil spray from the T-Pro company. It's called um, Cut and Wound Spray for Pets. I love this spray. You could, they also make a cream. So what I use this for is if I actually find an attached tick, especially a big fat one that's gonna leave a hole in my dog, I spray it with this. The tea tree oil is antimicrobial, antibiotic, and uh, antiviral. So it will kill anything that's living in that area and it does really improve the healing um, and a lot of that itchiness pets get after you pull a tick off of them. So the tea pro spray is important. The next thing I have, and I should have my tick puller, but I don't, is a pile of toilet paper that's already cut in little pieces to wrap my ticks in. Some people use a bottle or a jar with an alcohol cotton ball in there and throw them in there. You can do that and then flush that down the toilet or save it and send it to the state, whatever you prefer. Um, some people also use a set of tweezers to pull the ticks. I don't feel like I can really get them with the tweezers, but this little cup with a V in it um, that is the tick remover um, is also useful to have. And I didn't grab mine because I'm so used to grabbing them with my hands. And I also want to show you how to do this if you don't have a tick remover because not everyone gets those. Although at a lot of vet offices, you can get those. It's like a, a little tiny scoop that has a V in the dent of the... Um, spoon part and you hook the tick on that and you can pull them right out. I'm not thinking I'm going to find any on him <laughs> um, and also like I said I wanted to show you how to do this if you don't have one of those scoops but this time of year you can get them in Petco and places like that and they're really cheap and it's worth having a couple of them. <sighs> so the first thing I do is if my dog has any clothes on and I'm not going to do this now I take them off because ticks like to live under the collars and it can really interfere with your ability to find what's going on. I guess I can take this off, Biscuit, because you don't need it. So the first thing you do is just run your hand flat over your dog's head, pushing in just a little bit to see if you feel any lumps. And this is sometimes the only thing you need to do to find ticks. The ears, no matter what kind of ears your dog has, should be soft and flat. You shouldn't feel any lumpies. You can also do a visual inspection when you're doing this little rub down over the ears. And most dogs find this really pleasant. The problem for Tristan, so I have a little lump here in his ear. That's where a tick was. It's a little scab, so I inspect that. And the hardest part is to get underneath here. A lot of dogs don't really like you pushing here very much because it's uh, a lot of soft tissue for swallowing and eating, and we want to protect that. But do try to get your dog's nose up. Come on, Bess. <laughs> for even just a second to feel under here, because all around under the jaw is another favorite place for ticks to live. So once I've done that, and I've done kind of smoothing over the rough, another favorite place for ticks to live. And then down around the armpits, and usually I do a whole separate thing with the armpits afterwards. So once I've done that, and this is the part Tristan actually likes, except for the removing of the ticks, I go backwards on the hair. You know, on a lot of our corgis, you got this white patch so that you can find them in the field. <laughs> and it makes it easier 
to find a tick in there. So I do a visual inspection, picking the hairs up, <laughs> seeing if I find, whoops, there is something down there. What is that, this? Seeing if I find anything. And if you've just been for a walk, you might find something doing this um, because they haven't attached yet. And this is pretty relaxing for the dog. Now I did see something dark swim by as I was parting the hair here. So I'm going to take a closer look in this particular area. And you'll think that it's right by the point of shoulder, but our dogs, especially this one, their skin is pretty loose. So, you know, if he changes position at all, the point of shoulder is a mile away from the thing that you saw or some other landmark that you might have. Hmm. I know it's in there, Bess. We'll find it sooner or later. So I'm just parting the hairs really close together and sorting through them. And I think we all remember watching videos of Jane Goodall and the chimps and the chimps sitting together and doing their little bug check in the afternoon. It's sort of like that because we have fingers and we can really get in there and look. So at this point, I'm pretty much everything noseward of the middle of the dog here is where I'm looking. And Tristan is getting kind of stiff because he's nervous because he knows I'm on the trail of something. Or so I think. I don't know. I might not find anything. Often when you think you found something, it's a scab from an uh, old tick. So I do this really careful check on both sides. Flip. <laughs> I'm trying to keep him in your view. Um, and just as an aside, the rose geranium seems to be working really well. I've only actually found one tick on him, even at the beach, after I've been using a couple of drops on his shoulders. I haven't even actually put any on his bun's end. And I just gave him a touch-up spray with the Kin and Kind um, organic spray yesterday because the rose geranium is pretty strong and we were going to work and there's a lot of ticks at work. So we have to definitely suit up to go there but um, the rose geranium was too fragrant so he'll get another dose of that it seems to be lasting easily three days on this little dog so um, i can't recommend it enough and the smell is pretty pleasant i don't mind it at all and when you're doing this hair parting really check around the base of the ears the ticks love to get in all those little wrinkles around the ears and you might have to do each of these searches a couple of times because the ticks hide really well. And a lot of us have what some people might think of as a spidey sense where you just pat your dog and you feel it immediately. Um, and if you are lucky enough to have that, great. I got to tell you, I had a vet that used to come here with his dogs for craniosacral body work. And they were Aussie shepherds. So they were silky long hair like a collie and they were loaded with ticks because he used to run them in the woods and they were black dogs. And it seemed like whenever I went to an area to work on them, like one of them had a shoulder problem, one of them had a spine problem, there would be ticks under my hand. So the ticks do tend to go to wherever your dog has a weakness in their energetic system. So keep that in mind. If you've got a dog that has an old herniated disc in their neck, check that area really carefully so now this might be hard for some people to do with their dogs i flip my dog over after i've done the top half okay this you are caught in the line a little bit and i don't know if you can see him and you know obviously i usually do this on the floor or the sofa where he's a little more comfortable and then you just keep parting the hair and you can even just run your fingers like a little scooch down them and sometimes you'll feel a lump that way but it is a little bit time consuming especially if you have a bigger dog the other thing you should notice like every once in a while your dog might be walking across the floor and stop dead and start scratching if that happens unless you have fleas immediately go and check where the dog is scratching because often 
they're scratching a tick that's getting a good grip on them. Bissy. I saw some lump over here a while back, but I can't find it now. And you start to think you must have been hallucinating, but if you look long enough, you'll usually find whatever it was that you thought you saw. And I might have to keep looking because I don't want to spend three hours having you watch me sort my dog's hair. <laughs> and look under the chin again. Easy bissy. <laughs> Oh, it's looking good under there. I have caught him scratching under there a couple of times, but he's had a tick there maybe two weeks ago. So I think he's just scratching the old itchiness as it's healing. All right, while you have your dog upside down, this is a good time to check the armpits. Ticks love the armpits. Dogs can't get in there really well with their hind leg because the skin is usually loose so they can move their arm. So go all around where the leg attaches to the body. For want of the technical word to confuse you, we're just going to call it the armpit. And then right up through that area. Now he has a little spot there. What is it? It looks like a piece of a scab from an old tick. And it's kind of gummy and gross, so I'm just going to get that out of there. And if this were a tick, this is exactly what I would be doing if I didn't have a tick cup. I'd be using a piece of toilet paper getting a grip on the thing and pulling it down through the hair. And some people just do this with their fingers, but you know, I really think ticks are so full of bacteria and stuff, I don't want to touch them. I know, there's nothing there. And the good thing about the tip cup, if you can get one, is that you don't take hairs out of your dog when you're going down through the hair, pulling out something you find. Nope, we're looking all clean in there, Bis. This area is really hard to check. You might have to do some belly rubs while your dog's upside down to convince him to relax so that you can really get into that loose skin and hair all around the arm. The front leg, he still has a spot there healing up. Looking pretty clean there, Scooter Lee. The other thing I've had really good luck with is, like at work, I would do this because the grass there, they're not mowing it as much and it's up to his shoulders. Um, I would bring a slicker brush, and I mean, I certainly do this here after I walk him along the roadside. And right after the walk, no matter what he's got on him, do a quick brush over because the slicker brush really picks up ticks in it pretty well and I've more than once found them and sometimes I look at the brush and I don't see anything and then when I start to pull the hair out I'll find a tick running around in there. So while he's upside down I'm just doing a really good check of his whole front half. Now an occasional tick likes the corgi's buns end or your dog and that's not like you're going to see too many back here but a quick inspection of the armpits in the back and around here where his parts were before he was not a boy anymore. He's got some kind of scum here. Let me just look. It's not a tick. It looks like he had a tick there. So, and also this is a favorite area of fleas. So while you're looking back here, you might find a flea nest, which is a bunch of dried blood and red spots. Um, so that you can know then if your dog has fleas. He has a bloody spot here, which I think is where a tick was. I'm not really sure. I can't tell what it, that is, but it's definitely not active. So check a little bit back here. I mean, you think the ticks would love to go in the fuzz buns where you can't really get in there to look, but I've never found a tick in the fuzz buns, no matter how ticky my environment is. Oh, I feel something over here, Bis. See, just flipping him over then, I just happened to put my hand in a spot where there's a lump. And again, this just seems to be um, a bloody spot where a tick was. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit by pulling off some of the scummies that are there. Oh yeah, it's just a scab, so there's not much stuff there that's gooky. So... And then back to this shoulder. Since I know I saw something here, or I think I did, 
Um, I'm going to go back through here really closely. Relax the leg, bis. The more you can make this like a massage, the more your dog will relax. The more relaxed your dog is, the more your dog will, um, you'll be able to move your dog around to do a really good inspection. Shoulder. <laughs> it is funny how they can be so limp and so stiff so easily. <laughs> Skills it takes years for ballerinas to learn. So that when you're stiff, you can easily be lifted no matter how big a ballerina you are. And now I'm just running my fingers. I'm just basically doing this. It's a variation on a T-touch really. I'm not using my fingernails, which we would be if we were doing the T-touch that's like this. But I'm just kind of bunching up the fur and trying to feel any lumps in there. And I'm not finding any. It's also a good way to remove some hair from your dog. Some people like to do a little brushing before you do this just to get some of the loose hair out because we have a lot of hair here that we've roughed up with our searching. What do you think, Tris? We haven't found any. You are doing well with that geranium. So that's the basic way to do a tick check. And then I finish off you know, obviously I might spend more than like 15 minutes doing this. It's fun to do this while you're just sitting on the sofa in the evening. And honestly, I think if you don't have that spidey sense when you're just sitting there not thinking about it, your hand will go to those spots. So doing it while you're watching TV is also certainly acceptable. Right, Tristan? He says, I'm doing okay. Then to finish, I do that smoothing that I did at the beginning just to make sure nothing has come to the surface through all my ruffling. And smooth down the ears. And really, if your dog wears a collar when he's outside, the ticks really like to go under the collar. So I would look there closely. And you kind of get a map in your head of where ticks were <laughs> over time. And so when you're looking, you'll know whether you're on an old spot where there's a little lump or a new spot. So we just smooth down the ears and the legs. Sometimes you'll find a tick on the leg on the way up to your dog, especially if you've got a dog that has more than stumpers. Oh, you are shedding a lot. What a surprise. You're a corgi. So then I just smooth them over and always after you do a tick check, it's nice to give your dog a treat to make it more fun so that they'll let you do it next time. And you know, once you start doing this, you start to um, get obsessed <laughs> and you start really looking through their hair and their ears and make it fun for your dog and they'll be happy to come over and let you do this. It's nice when you have a little one. Um, if you have a big dog, you have to sometimes get on the floor with them to do this and it will take more time. But remember, smooth the hair, feeling for lumps, and then go back and part the hair. Do it in some kind of methodical order. I start in the middle of my dog, part the hair going down his shoulders, and you know, obviously much more carefully than I'm doing it now. Try to separate it like every half inch or less. Um, I usually try to do like a quarter inch between my parting. And some people like to use a flea comb to do this so that they can really see what they're doing and be methodical about their parting. Um, I find with this type of hair, the flea comb gets stuck and it's kind of obnoxious. So I just use my fingers and then you can also do this kind of snuggling all around the dog, really using your fingers to feel for any lumps or bumps. And that's how you find the ticks. And we didn't have any. Yay! <laughs> I know, Tristan. So that's a basic look at how to do a tick check on your dog. Smoothing, parting, fluffing, flip over, check the armpits, check around the back legs, and check underneath of here, the chin, because they like it under here in the rough. And uh, the rough is a big fluffy part of the dog, and that's a good place for a tick to hide. Because even though a dog can easily reach to scratch with his hind leg up here, um, it's so hairy he could be scratching a half an inch away from where the tick is. So the tick feels pretty safe. So, and get yourself some of this oil uh, or spray. It's T-Pro. Pretty sure my sister, drjudymorgan.com, has this on her website. 
I know she sells it in her office. <laughs> so you should be able to get it. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. Um, and I will have to repost this to Ira because we started late today. I have to say, after I've been at my job as an educator for two days, it takes me a while to get through my email and get caught up enough in the morning to feel ready to do this. So I'm always running late after those two days. So we will be back tomorrow with another episode of Conversations with a Corgi and as well on Saturday and Sunday, we're going to a Corgi meetup outside of Worcester somewhere. And I may do a live from there instead of Sunday morning. So keep that in mind. And my radio show will be airing my first one on Monday on Dream Vision 7 at 7 in the morning and 7 in the evening. And we'll have an update on that too as we go along. So thanks for joining us today. Everybody, good luck finding the ticks on their dogs. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any other suggestions for people, post them. And I will take a picture of my tick cup and post it so that people can see what it looks like. Good boy, Tristan. Did you have an inspection? <laughs> Smell it clothes and geranium. <laughs> uh oh, you're pushing the pillow off the lap. You're going to get really short. <laughs> Somebody knows he's getting a snack for his effort. All right, we will see you tomorrow, hopefully closer to 8.30. And thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day. Stay out of the ticks. And check out that rose geranium. It's working. <laughs>